Hi, it's Gab and Dad. Hello. 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 Back again for a movie review. <laughs> Back again. Here we are. Hello. <laughs> and this time I'm is... going to deliver this movie review with a heavy Scottish accent. Is that right? To show your passion? Yeah. Well, because in this film, well, you should tell, you should explain what film we're doing before I explain. <laughs> that the would be good. <laughs> It's Alice in Wonderland. Is, does, it, does that sound Scottish to you? No, but it's uh, Johnny Depp, of course, starring Tim Burton directing Alice in Wonderland story. Care to explain the story? Well, everybody knows the story, or at least thinks they know the story. It's based, obviously, on the books by Lewis Carroll, Alice in Wonderland. And Alice 50 through the, years old or is, so. Is that old? Yeah. And Alice Through the Looking Glass, uh, classic children's books, which I read when I was a child. Uh, and as far as I when can remember, like two? When I was actually at three months when I read these. <laughs> It's always very advanced. <laughs> uh, and as far as I can remember, bearing in mind I was only three months old when I read the books, um, the film is quite faithful, broadly speaking, to what happens in these books. I, yeah, I, I think so. I don't know. I, I probably read, those, read them. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe I did. I'm but father. I was I there. <laughs> I watched you. I read you. it in secret. I watched you not read the <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, everybody feels they have an impression of the story, whatever the source material would have been, because it's been interpreted in various it's like, guises. It's like Dickens. Everybody thinks they've read Dickens, yeah, it's but just nobody one of those... has. I mean, uh... <laughs> hopefully, hopefully Dickens' mom did. Anyway, um, so you feel like you know these characters. I mean, the Mad Hatter, Alice, falls down the hole. I mean, you, this Red, is all very Red familiar. Queen. Yeah, everything's familiar, so you don't feel um, discombobulated by, by what's going on. So in that no. sense, it feels faithful. No. Um, and then beyond that, visually, of course, uh, Tim Burton brings a very sort of new, uh, creative, uh, savvy, whimsy, and sophistication to to what we're looking at, if not the and story. And it's in 3D, this film. And, and, I, it's and the 3D, 3D really works. The stuff leaps off the screen at you in a very uh, compelling, and I found actually very interesting way. Yeah, it certainly suits the, uh, the, uh, the story and what's going on and all the visuals very nicely. Although I keep finding with 3D, in the beginning I'm all, oh, that's neat. But then I just sort of, my eyeballs start taking it for granted and I kind of forget that it's Well, so I like the glasses we were wearing this time around. I mean, they were, the, for Avatar, there was these huge clunky... But that's because it was IMAX. It's a Is different that, technology. Oh, 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 I see. So that's, that was the reason. That these, was the these reason. were like wearing sunglasses. You could wear them, you know, down yeah. to the beach. Like, he wears the sunglasses. Although they tell you right. not to wear these down to the beach. Do, Do you know, they? On the hmm. Oh, yeah, it says... Well, it doesn't they don't take out uh, ultraviolet light, so... They make it in 3D. <laughs> <laughs> Health tips from Gab and Dad. So if you wear them on the beach, it's bad for your eyes, but you'll see everything in 3D. <laughs> <laughs> the sun will be that close. Anyway, um, so visually, um, very uh, pristine and magical, and that was really the best part. And the little, the fun details, I mean, uh, uh, Burton has this wicked sense of humor where, you know, Flamingo is a golf club. Well, no, that's in the original book. The flame does oh, not yes. See, I didn't read the and book, obviously. And it's not obviously. a golf club, it's croquet. Croquet. There's where? a famous scene in the, in the original book, which I she guess clearly I didn't, didn't read. read <laughs> when the I Red Queen uses a flamingo as a mallet to bash the croquet ball, which, which is a, a little hedgehog. Which is a little hedgehog. Now, that's, that's well, the, the way that all of those things were um, were used were very nice uh, touch. I mean, the, the, the art, art design is just uh, immaculate. Impeccable. Yeah, you could have no complaints from that whatsoever. Beyond that, I have to say, I honestly didn't feel like this film had great meatiness to offer, so to speak. Can I explain why? Could you explain why now I'm speaking with a strong Scottish accent? That sounds more Indian. <laughs> or is it, well, it, no, it's, it's actually Scottish. Okay, sure. Uh, I, and I was thinking of wearing a kilt when I did this review, but I decided that would be uh, counting the whole thing to excess. <laughs> Which so, we would never do. <laughs> we would, uh, at various points in the film, Johnny Depp, who plays the Mad Hatter, suddenly uh, takes on a Scottish accent. Yeah, well, when he so gets all, really worked up. When he really gets worked up, and I think it's a spoof on Mel Gibson and Braveheart. Yeah, it could be. Yes, because we will not surrender, yeah. we will fight, you know, so... Fight the Red Queen. And it was, this was a nice little... That was a nice little... I really enjoyed his performance. I mean, you can't Amazing. go wrong with his Johnny wonderful Depp. wonderful eyes. Yeah, I mean, and all the performances, and the voice performances as well. A lot of very seasoned uh, British um, Stephen uh, Fry performances the that you'd, rec uh, you'd recognize. Alan Rickman as the as the caterpillar. Um, so uh, you know, it definitely it, it hit the mark in, in in many creative ways. But I just it otherwise felt a little bit flat for me. The story wasn't quite strong enough. Uh, I don't know if it was the script or the source material. And I didn't really feel that Wait emotionally engaged. Wait a engaged. minute. You're, start, you're sitting here talking about a great famous classic for the ages and saying the story is not strong enough? But this isn't, I mean, this is an adaptation of the book and I don't think that the script did 
did justice to the book I didn't read. <laughs> I see. Well, I actually like this film a lot. Uh, I would give it very high marks, really pretty much across the board, I, and I found it thoroughly entertaining. The acting was excellent, the visuals were excellent, as Gabrielle's explained, the direction was impeccable. Uh, I particularly like, by the way, well, obviously Johnny Depp is, was wonderful as Matt Hatter, but I particularly like the, the, the young actress who played uh, Alice, whose name is Maria Wasikowski or something like that. No. Uh, no, it's <laughs> not that. Well, something, it's a name I haven't heard before. Right. Say, but yeah, I well, found she's a her, newcomer. I found her charming in the role, very convincing. I thoroughly I, I liked it. I was not engaged with, uh, to her. I don't know who, if, if young you know, women would really, re or anyone would really relate to that character, per se. Well, I can't She's say. more of a foil for the rest of what goes on. Well, I don't agree with that. I, I, I like the film a lot, and I think for both children and adults, it's a thoroughly entertaining and engaging experience. I would encourage you to go and see Max it. Max went with us. He couldn't join he us for the review. He's otherwise engaged. But uh, he... Playing poker, I think. Isn't <laughs> that's right, with the boys. Smoking cigars. Um, <laughs> So he was uh, very focused. He was sitting forward the, the whole time um, and, and seemed to be very uh, engaged and delighted with uh, the film as, as, a, as a children's film. So I would recommend it as, as, a, as a family film that uh, yeah, is a nice experience true, for kids, definitely. True three-generational film. Yeah, that was a good one for that, enjoy. definitely. And, um, and, some, and some nice messages for children in it as well. So I think, I think it's better than you think it is, but you don't dislike it. I don't dislike it. There was nothing about it I disliked. And they say, of course, that as you get older, you really revert to your childish ways. So maybe that's why I liked it as there much as I did. So you going to go suck your thumb? Hi, it's time for Gavin Dad's March DVD giveaway. We just reviewed Alice in Wonderland, the, of course, new Tim Burton, Johnny Depp collaboration. So this month's pick is another one of those. Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Tim Burton, Johnny Depp, another whimsical foray, of course. So you can win this DVD if you're a Gap and Dad subscriber. So if you're not, please subscribe, and a name is drawn at random by the end of the month. If you are a subscriber, thank you so much. We love our subscribers. Now, in one month's time, Gab and Dad will be having our one-year anniversary doing movie reviews. And it was our goal to reach 500 subscribers by the one-year mark. And we're close, but we're not quite close enough yet. So please, if you like what you see with our reviews, please do subscribe. And if you're already a subscriber, please recommend us to people who you know who might enjoy our reviews as well. We make a great gift. Thanks for watching.